After the landslide that engulfed Taiwan's freeway number no. three last month, the issue of the structural safety of our roads has become a hot topic of conversation on the island. A significant number of Taiwan's expressways are built on mountain slopes like the Taipei Yilan Freeway along the rugged east coast. 91% of the road is tunnels and bridges. Although they do not go over rivers, the bridges must cross mountain ranges, survive earthquakes, and at the same time not damage the slopes. In the latest in our series of features on the bridges of Taiwan, we go to the Taipei Yilan Freeway to find out how engineers try to work in harmony with nature. In the mountainous Taiwan, building roads and bridges through the dramatic scenery is no easy task. Along the 55-kilometer Taipei Yilan Freeway, bridges and tunnels make up 91% of the road. Minimizing the damage to the mountain slopes was a challenge for the builders. From the very start, we designed the lanes in both directions to be together on the same bridge deck and only made one pier to reduce construction time and limits damage to the mountain. Unlike other road bridges, which have double piers, the freeway is supported by single pillars. Using the well foundation method, excavators dug down in a straight line, while rebars were added layer by layer. Concrete were poured in before steel supports were installed. The next step was to build the dig. The top was built section by section. After the cage in the middle was made, we put in two precast trusses on either side, then did the cantilevers before widening the bridge deck to four lanes. In this way, only the places where the bridge piers are needed to be cleared of trees, and when building the top, the trees were unharmed. To minimize the impact on the environment, most of the bing work was done on top of the completed piers. There are several ways to build a cantilever bridge. In the cast segmental method, the arms of the bridge are joined together using a form traveler to launch segments on either side of the piers. Another way is to use a platform with movable scaffolding to support the work as it moves forward. Alternatively, precast segments can be pushed out using a collapsible platform in the so-called incremental launching method. To protect the bridge from expanding and contracting in hot or cold weather, there's a space between the piers and the beams. We put in expansion joints at regular intervals so the bridge can handle temperature changes because thermal contraction is very powerful. So in suitable places we loosen the bonds with bearings. The bearings can move and soak up heat expansion and cold contraction. The bearings connect the piers to the beams, leaving a gap, rather than welding the two together to adjust for temperature changes. As for protection against earthquakes, the steel structure inside certain bridge piers is designed to be ductile. In each unit we have some bridge piers which are joined together at the top and bottom. They're called rigid bearings and can withstand most of the force of an earthquake. Every substance has a plasticity point, which is when external pressure deforms it until its structure breaks. The plasticity point of a bridge is almost always in the piers. We don't want it to break in the foundations because if that happens, the whole thing will collapse. So we do mechanical analysis of the pillars to find the plasticity point and allow it to hinge, which means if there's a major earthquake, it won't break. That plastic hinge will absorb most of the seismic force. The pier chosen to soak up the force of an earthquake is strengthened with extra steel cables and concrete inside. The plasticity point is then encased in more concrete to limit the quake damage. But despite advances in construction techniques, designers have to adapt to the natural features of Taiwan to build sustainable infrastructure for the island.